Uh, hi class, this is Professor Smith. I'm going to be doing a movie on graphing a line given its equation in slope intercept form. The first thing we want to do is recognize the information that's given to us when we're asked to graph a line when it's given in slope intercept form. Using the annotation tools on Zoom, I'm going to box our equation of our line and then I'm going to highlight which values give us the slope and which values give us the y-intercept, and then talk about what each of those are. So the three is going to represent the slope, and the slope is always the coefficient of x, and then the y-intercept, I'll change the color, is going to be the constant, and we have a subtracted two, which we can think of as plus a minus two. And so that's gonna represent our y-intercept. Now let's talk about what on earth are the slope and the y-intercept. If you're a football fan like I am, whenever a football player, they say, intercepts the ball, it's sort of like it cuts off its path. If you have a line, and I'll just graph any line using the graphing tool on Alex. So I've graphed a line on Alex, it turns out the place where the line crosses or is intercepted by the y-axis, that value is called the intercept. And so the intercept would be this value right here that I'm trying to draw with the annotation tool. Let's see if I can do a little bit better job. So that would be that point right here. So the intercept would be, in this particular case, the value 5. So the y-intercept is the line crossing the y-axis, the value of that y-value as you cross the y-axis. So in this case, it would be four. So let's just graph another line just for the fun of it. So I'll use the graphing line tool on Alex. So in this particular case, the y-intercept would be negative five because that's where the line crosses the y-axis. So every line will cross the y-axis except for in one case, and that is in the case when, let me clear all these drawings, when the line looks like this and it has a special name. And that line, when that line is vertical. So when it's vertical, it will not cross the y-axis. Unless, of course, it is the y-axis. So every line will have a y-intercept uh, if it is not a vertical line, like, with the exception of the y-axis. All right, so let's go ahead, now that we know that the slope is 3 and the y-intercept is negative 2. All right, so let's do that. So negative 2 is where it's going to cross the line, so let me erase these two values because those aren't where it crosses. And let's change the color to blue. And then let's use the highlight tool. So it's gonna cross at negative two. So make sure you go to negative two and not positive twos. So here's negative twos. So that's gonna give me my y-intercept. Now I'm going to use the slope to get the second point. And so how do I do that? Well, I'm gonna rewrite three as a fraction. So when I rewrite 3 as a fraction, there's several ways that I can do that. So I can rewrite the number 3, and it's equal to 3 divided by 1. That would be one way to express 3 as a fraction. And you say, well, because 1 goes into 3 three times. Another way to write 3 as a fraction is to use the number maybe 6 over 2. Another way is negative nine over three. And you're thinking, well, wait a moment, negative nine over three won't work. So how about negative nine over negative three? Because both the signs need to be the same in order for it to be positive. So these are several ways that we can represent the number three. So I'm going to use this first one. I'm going to use the fact that three can be represented as three over one. And it turns out the number in the numerator gives me the GPS or the direction of movement for the Y direction. And the number in the denominator gives me the GPS or the movement in the X direction. The Y direction is up and down. We call that vertical. And the X direction is left to right or right to left, which we call that horizontal direction. So we're going to use the three for our y direction. So I'm going to use the arrow tool with a red arrow for there, three, and that's going to represent 
the y direction. And since it's positive, I'm going to go up three. I'll change the color to green for the horizontal direction. So for the horizontal direction, because it's a positive one, I'm going to go to the right one because positive numbers are on the right side and negative numbers on the left. So I'm going to go right one. If this were um, a negative one and a negative three, I would go down three and to the left one. So I'll show that example as well. So let's go ahead and capture that. I'm going to go to the right one. So I'm going to go down three from my y-intercept. Pardon me, I'm not down three, up three, sorry. So I'm going to go up three. So one, two, three, I think takes me there. And then I'm going to go right one and let's change the color of my arrow so it'll match and then go right one. That value now will point to my next point. So I'm going to use the point tool on Alex and click plot point. Oh dear, now I'm not going to click plot point. I just told a big story. I'm going to use the pen tool <laughs> on Alex and plot that point. I'm going to also plot the point at negative two. Let me blow it up just a little bit so you can see a little bit better. So there's my tools here. There's my point at negative two. And then this is one where I went up three, one, two, three, and to the right one, my second point. All right, now what I'd like to do is show you that if I use another number for three, in other words, if I use three equal to negative three over one, that works as well. So let me shrink it back down so my graph matches what I have written already on the board. All right, now that I've decreased the graph, so now the drawing matches up again. So I'm going to use three represented as negative three over negative one, just to show you that if I plot that point using the second representation, I will still get the same line. So I'm gonna use the arrow tool. I'm gonna go down three instead of up three. So one, two, three will take me to negative five. And then I'm going to go to the left one. So because it's negative, I'm going to, in this case, go down three. And in this case, I'm going to go to the left one instead of right one. And when I use the pen tool to plot the point, I'm going to clear the drawings. You'll see that I have a line that goes through those three points. So whether I use the representation of three that was positive three over positive one or negative three over negative one, I'll get the same line. And let me bring back my drawings. So that's how you would graph the line given the slope and the y-intercept. So let's go ahead and check our work and do another one. It says we're correct, and let's do another. In this equation, we have the coefficient of x, or the number multiplied by x is 1 fourth. So that lets us know that the slope is 1 fourth. So in this example, we don't have to rewrite the slope as a fraction. It's already given as a fraction. The next thing we see is that the y-intercept is the constant, an added 1. So the y-intercept is going to equal one. So I'm gonna use my pen tool to graph my y-intercept first. Last time it was negative two, this time it's positive one. So I'm gonna go on the y-axis, hence the name y-intercept. And then I'm going to use the slope, and since it's already expressed as a fraction, to get my second point. I know the number in the numerator is my GPS or my directions to move in the Y direction. So since it's a positive one, I'm going to move in the Y direction up one. I know that the number in the denominator is my GPS or my movement in the horizontal or the X direction. And so since it's a positive four, I'm going to move to the right four. So I'll use my blue arrow to go up one from my y-intercept. So I'm going to go up one and then I'm going to use my green arrow to go to the right four. One, two, three, four. That will give me my position of my second point on my graph. 
I use the point tool on Alex and I plot that point. I select the line tool. I click my line on the y-intercept of one. Let me blow this up so that you can see it a little bit better. All right, so I have it selected on the, placing my first point on the y-intercept of one, and then I place my second point. Let me clear my drawing so it doesn't look so crazy. So I clicked my first one, and then I went up one and over four, clicked the second and drew the tool. I don't know why my mouse is not letting me um, shrink this back down. Oh, there we go, that's better. Let's go ahead and redo my drawings. Yeah, there we go, perfect. All right, so we're gonna select check, and we're correct, and we're gonna do one more practice. And I'm gonna show you a neat little trick. Once you get this down, you can move a little bit closer. So let's clear all our drawings and do one more practice. Oh, great, this is perfect. So now we have um, y equal to negative 2x plus one. So in this example, there is, excuse me, no 2x plus one, pardon me, it's y equal to negative 2x. In this example, we have the coefficient of x, which is negative two, but we don't have an added or subtracted constant, but it's understood to be plus zero, because when you add a zero, it doesn't change the value of an expression. So the y-intercept is actually zero. The slope is negative two and the y-intercept is zero. So the y-intercept of zero is y-axis, I go to zero. So it turns out when you're uh, starting at a y-intercept of zero, that's starting at the origin. So I place my point at zero, zero. Since it has negative two as a slope, I'm gonna rewrite that negative two as a fraction. And when I rewrite negative two as a fraction, I'm gonna rewrite that over what? You're right, I'm gonna rewrite it over one. Negative two divided by one is negative two. That lets me know that I'm going to move in the y direction down two because it's a negative number and I know that the number in the numerator is my up and down direction or my vertical direction or sometimes called the rise. And then the movement in the horizontal direction is going to be one, so right one. So I'll go ahead and blow up my picture just a little bit more so that you can see what I'm drawing. So here's the origin. So I'm going to go down two, one, two, and then to the right one, and that'll give me my second point. Let's say that I rewrote the slope using instead of negative two over one, I rewrote it this way as two, divided by negative one. Two divided by negative one is also equal to negative two. That means I would go up two and to the left one. So I can use the line tool to do that. So I'm gonna click my line tool, click on the origin. That's my first place, my y-intercept. And then instead of going down two, like I did here, I went down two and over one. Now I'm gonna go up two into the left one. And notice with the line tool, I didn't have to click the two points, I just clicked the line. Notice also that whether you use the first representation for slope or the second representation of slope, you still get the same line. So I hope this movie on graphing a line given its equation in slope-intercept form was helpful.